I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm talking with Frank Langella from the film The Trial of the Chicago 7, which is currently streaming on Netflix. Uh, the first question I have to ask is, as someone who actually lived through this time that's depicted in the movie, uh, what were your memories of that period, and did any of those color in your performance as uh, Judge Julius Hoffman? No and no. I didn't. I had absolutely no awareness of it. I was 30 years old and interested in the things a man is interested in at 30, plus my work. So I was living the young actor's life in New York City. It was a marvelous time to be young in New York, it was the 60s. I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, the Vietnam War as a whole and uh, Kent State and things like that were, I, I was aware of, but this went right by me, never had. So I had no nothing to compare it to. And then I read about the judge who was as about as big a son of a bitch as I've ever seen both on paper and in real life. So um, I was happy to play him and very happy that uh, somebody recently did a report on this movie, what was right, what was wrong, what the fact is and what the dramatic um, license was. And they said that Judge Hoffman was exactly the way I played him, which made me very happy. He was unrelentingly cruel, determined to convict everybody, utterly corrupt. And I think going a little nuts in the head, you know, well, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting you bring that up because, I mean, Judge Hoffman, uh, I think, is probably the source of some of the uh, truly hard to watch scenes in the movie, specifically when you look at how he is uh, reacting and managing the whole case. And I was wondering if there was any scene that was more difficult for you to perform as Judge Hoffman than others in the film. No, none of them were difficult. Uh, absolutely not. I I did have a, f a favorite, which oddly enough, wasn't in the courtroom. It was my only scene in my office where I ask one of the jurors if she thinks she's fit. I just loved that little scene. And also it was the very last thing I shot. So, but uh, people say this about movies all the time. We were one big family. Well, I don't know one big family that isn't dysfunctional. You know, you know, so, but we were very functional. We were not in any way dysfunctional. And I was 14 days with these actors in one room, 10, 14 hours a day. We never, we were, ha we, it was an unusual situation. We had to be there every day, all of us for the full time. And it was really joyous. I, I came to be you know, when you're as old as I am, they all, they're always taking your elbow as if you need to be walked across the set. And I would say, you know, no, I can still do that. And when I can't anymore, you can pick me up and carry me, but right now I'm okay. Delicious group of actors, really delicious. I'm curious, because you always think about when uh, the chemistry between actors, and usually you think about them interacting very close with each other in building that chemistry. But, uh, you know, you were in such a unique position because you're the judge, you're always in your chair, except that one scene, of course, where you're in your chambers. And d does that affect how you're able to build that chemistry with the other actors? Or, are, or does that not make a difference? Um, it, it doesn't make a hell of a difference. The, the most important difference is that when you're the judge, everybody has to look at you. They have no choice, you know, so you're not considering, is this my close up judge? What are, you, what are they going to do? And I also had from a perch and this, and when I was off camera, I had the luxury of watching each of them uh, figure out their characters. And we didn't do a lot of rehearsal. Um, Aaron chose very well. So we would run a scene through, maybe have a little brief talk about it, and then we'd shoot it. And I doubt that I did more, maybe two takes, three takes on everything, which is 
my way, I like that very much. I don't like it when a director does 30 and 40 takes. Uh, you brought up uh, the fact that this is uh, written and directed by Aaron Sorkin. Um, Sorkin is uh, very well known for the dialogue that he writes. And um, I was, and I actually had to double check because I was like, has Frank ever, has Frank Lagella ever done anything uh, with Aaron Sorkin before? And it, and it, this was the first one. And I was curious as to whether, you know, performing a play or screenplay that he had written uh, was something that you had uh, wanted to do? Um, I, I tend not to make a wish list because you, if an actor tries to form in any way his uh, career, like I will do this, I will do that, that's on my bucket list. Life gets in the way and your career gets in the way. But when I read this, Aaron just handed it to me on a silver platter. I put, I put my coffee down on my tea and thought, hmm, and I read it there immediately. And I called my agent and said, I have to be in this movie. And I did it about four pages before the end. I didn't know how it ended, but I knew it was a great role and among many. And uh, then Aaron and I met and I was utterly sure of it. Look, and Aaron's talking comes along once in a great while. He is, uh, I don't think you can say enough about his unique writing and now his directing career is beginning. You know, he's a Renaissance man. So I'll work for him again if he wants me to. Um, uh, to go into a bit of a different direction here, um, uh, I, I mean, you've been acting in films for a long time, but it's, uh, I, I think it would be safe to say that you, that your original love is the theater. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, but uh, as I get older, I'm very much in equally in love now with the camera. And I'll probably in this, in this last decade do more of that. Uh, the theater is a, a grind, a difficult one, which was fine by me for many years. I liked it. And I still will if I find a great role, but it's really wonderful now to try to bring everything down to the lens and you're able to play a very intimate moment that if it were a play, you'd have to hit the back row and uh, which affects the way you do it. But it's little, little, I think the reason I like the chambers scene is because there are very, very delightful moments between me and the other actors that can be thrown away because the camera's right there. I, well, what I was curious about is um, uh, one of the, uh, there have been so many effects of this pandemic on our society and uh, one of the, and one of the big ones has been uh, its effect on theater, specifically Broadway, in New York. And um, I was curious as to, um, uh, it, I was actually yeah, kind of asked my question, but I was wondering if you had hoped to return to the stage once theaters are able to reopen. Oh yeah, we'll see. We'll see when they reopen, and we'll see if I if I if I'm offered a really wonderful role. Um, I've done 22 Broadway shows by now, and about 10 off Broadway, and. Um, I've never been in one that I didn't want to be in. A very lucky career that way. So it would be nice. The last time I was on Broadway was a play called The Father, which was four years ago. So that's a very long break for me, but it's nice to say that I'm not the only actor out of work. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are. You know, I can't believe that this that this only hit me, you know, a couple of days ago, but uh, I it, it didn't dawn on me until a couple of days ago. It's like, holy cow, here's a movie with two incredible actors. And I mean, all, all, so many incredible actors are in this movie, but uh, to have uh, a movie with you and someone like Mark Rylance, um, who, you know, um, are these like towering figures, in, at least in my opinion. Uh, what What is Mark Rylance like as a screen partner or a scene partner, I should say? Well, he's wonderful. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be, um, to say a cliche, but I will. They were all wonderful. Every single one of them bounced, 
you know, there was never a, a feeling that you weren't uh, that you weren't in connection with the actor. Everybody was on their game, extraordinarily professional, extraordinarily committed, and uh, you just felt the moment the camera rolled. I have to stay on my toes here because I'm working opposite actors, different techniques. Of many of them, very different than mine, very different techniques, and somehow it all worked. And that I think is also, uh, if you see a movie in which everybody seems to be in the same movie, and often it's not the case, uh, it's the director. And that's what he did. He kept us all in the same movie, same style, Every once in a while, he gives very little notes, but every every once in a while, he'd come to me and say, a little bit of the classical actor creeping in. <laughs> and I'd say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, when I'd go back, you know, my stage training was so automatic. Uh, delicious experience. And I can't say that about a lot of the things I've done. Lucky though, I've been fortunate to be in some extraordinary plays and movies. Um, you had actually just mentioned that the last time you were on Broadway was when you were uh, in the play The Father, uh, yeah. where you won the Tony Award uh, for Best Actor in a Play in 2016. You gave an uh, incredible speech that evening uh, because it was in the immediate wake of the tragedy at Pulse Nightclub in Orlando. Um, uh, our nation right now is bitterly divided, and we've just witnessed a riot at the U.S. Capitol building, and I couldn't help but think of what you said that evening about how we could either let tragedy destroy us, define us, or make us stronger. And I was curious if you had any thoughts about how we as a society could use this tragedy to make us stronger. Um, yes, I, I have a thought. It, it's, it's been my belief for a very long time that uh, very few people ever act for the greater good, if you know what I mean. They act for themselves, their little world, their house, their family, their life. And if we could begin to see that acting for the greater good is extraordinarily rewarding, I think we'll come through this. Uh, maybe certainly the worst four years I've ever witnessed and I've been voting for presidents for I don't know how many, 40, 50 years. Um, and there's something about how far down we went and how low it got that made people far more aware of politicians and politics and what, how bad it can be. And I think that's the only good that might have come about this, which is I think many, many people, millions of them became far more aware of what was going on and wanting to save a democracy. And it's really quite marvelous to see that we did, that in the end, this cliche is true. The truth and justice will out. And the other thing is the wonderful addition of women and black folks and Spanish and the diversity that I think Mr. Biden will bring comes directly out of this, um, white supremacist idea. The white man is really, I don't want to say he's on his way out, but he's on his way to moving over marginally now. And in 50 years or so, he will not be the dominant force. It will be Blacks, women, Hispanics, Asian, which is just great. It's just great. You know, you're always afraid of something that's not you. And when people were talking about the riot on the 6th of January, and I saw, the, I saw the amount of vitriol in these faces and the hatred that was coming off of them, meaningless uh, physical banging windows and ripping canvases and looking at papers, they didn't know what it was. And I thought, this isn't just hate, this is fear. This is real fear. That is not like me, and I want to get rid of it. 
and this is my country. And it's just because white men have ruled this country for a very, very long time. And there are a lot of people now saying, I want in. I, you know, I've been fighting for this for a long time. And I think it, I don't think it can be stopped, this onrush of diversity. And I think Biden's the perfect guy. Well, uh, uh, Frank, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We wish you all the best uh, during this upcoming award season. And to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com to make your predictions and use our Gold Derby app and see if you can outsmart the, smart, the, the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Mr. Langella. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.